It was uh, the first week, week and a half in November, when he came down. Um, as soon as we hit Key Largo, boom, first tiki bar that we saw, we went in and, and had a drink. And um, it's so, again, it's so ironic too, because that evening was the first time that, that he ever told me he loved me. It started getting late, I guess it was about 10 or 11, and we went back to my friend Jan's place, took a nap, and um, just, you know, had a nice little sleep, and the next thing we knew, it was, you know, like one in the morning, and a friend of mine's band was playing down the street. So, uh, so we went to watch the band, and uh, I guess had, uh, I know, two and a half drinks there. I had two and a half, he had two. They were frozen drinks, mud balls. So the bartender gave me, you know, the extra half that was left over out of the blender. But, um, you know, we were pretty much buzzing, but nothing, you know, nothing where I didn't know what was going on, or he didn't know what was going on. We were, we were pretty with it. And, um, decided to take a ride. Um, earlier that evening, we went to watch the sunset down by the Seven Mile Bridge, and it was a beautiful evening. The, you know, the moon was out, the stars were shining, and um, we decided to take a ride down to the bridge. But what we were actually looking to do was to just park on the side and just enjoy the, you know, the, the beautiful scenery. We were looking for a scenic overview point. And being, um, being adventuresome like Max was, he directed and he said, why don't we go down this road? And there was a big sign that said, authorized vehicles only. And had I not been um, impaired in any, in any way, I mean, I was, I, I didn't use good judgment because I should have said, no, we can't go down that road. But instead it was like, okay, you know. So we got on this bridge road and um, I didn't know where it was leading to, but it was just a bridge, and it was the old Seven Mile Bridge, and uh, we just were riding. We weren't going too fast. We were going, I'd say, like 35. Again, you know, Max was right next to me, and I know that if we were speeding, he wouldn't have let me speed. And, um, you know, we were proceeding. I was like, wow, this, this is just a regular kind of bridge road. I wonder where it goes, where it ends up. And uh, it, it was just about when I had said something where we went around a, a curb. And just out of nowhere, there was this big cement barrier that I just went crashing right into. And at first, I mean, the first, after the initial jolt, I was like, oh my God, where did that come from? And there was no response from Max. And I grabbed his hand and I was just shaking it and I was saying, where did that come from? Oh my God, you know? And still no response. So I figured he, you know, hit his head and he was passed out. Then I realized that I was in a tremendous amount of pain and I couldn't move. I couldn't move my whole left side. I knew something was really wrong. And then when I went down to reach my ankle and I pulled my hand up and it was just covered in blood and I could feel the bones in my ankle. I was like, I freaked out and I was, of course, was looking for a reassuring word from Max or, you know, for Max to just take my hand and be like, calm down, everything's going to be all right. But he was just still, he just looked like he was sleeping. And then I realized I started shaking him and I was like, Max, wake up. And then I realized he wasn't breathing. And he was dead. And I just couldn't believe it. I mean, I can't believe nobody heard that scream. That just, you know, it was a scream that just, you know, was one of just take me to, you know, I wish I was dead right now too. And of course, all these, all these images were coming into my mind. I was I was looking for the angels that were gonna come and take him. I was I was actually waiting to die. I knew, you know, I knew something was really wrong with me. Every every breath that I took was a a conscious effort, you know, because I knew something really messed up in my lungs. But 
I just had to focus on, on me right now, you know. I, it was so hard to do with, you know, the guy that I cared so much about next to me dead, and we were out in the middle of nowhere. I, I had no idea how anyone was going to find us. So, um, those next few hours, it had to be a few hours, because I guess this happened about 3.30, and they didn't find us till about 7.30, no, 6.30, that, um, oh God, I can't tell you the, the things that went through my mind. I, I must have maintained consciousness through the whole thing, because had I, had I lost consciousness, I knew I was going to die. And just this montage of things coming through my head, like I can't do this to my mother and father, I can't do this to my brothers and sister, you know. I, I thought about his family because they were all, you know, so nice and, you know, how am I going to, how is anybody going to understand how this happened? I, I don't know what got me through, I just prayed and prayed and prayed and it seemed like an eternity before I saw those blue lights. But um, I was pretty, pretty close to dead myself. I don't know how I made it. I, I lost almost half of my blood, and um, and again the whole, the, I guess the instinct to survive hit. I, I remember taking off my seatbelt, and I was actually thinking I could climb out of the car and like crawl back up to the road. I mean, I, I was just, you know, freaking out. But um, God, I. I couldn't believe when those police finally came and they were, talk about angels, they were like angels because they saved my life, you know, I, I, I knew that I couldn't have lasted much longer. So anyway, I guess that was the beginning of, you know, what, what next turned into just like a, a flurry of, of, um, of rescue people. You know, I, I remember that everybody was so nice, you know, just telling me to hang in there. And But I could also hear the whispers of like, wow, this, this girl's really, you know, really messed up. <laughs> I remember them putting me in the, in the ambulance and, the, you know, the police stroking my hair and everybody was just so nice, you know, to me. And I was in such excruciating pain. I can't even, every time I think about that pain. <laughs> I mean, it was just, it was like my body was just like one huge ball of pain. I mean, especially...